Hi, my name is Destiny, and I want to take you guys along with me on a little repurposing journey that I've been on. This is a project that studies the realm of recycling in the form of repurposing items. As I looked around the world, it raised a lot of questions for me. I saw how nature was integrated into our everyday lives by looking at the dead, by seeing the rebirth of living things. I was itching to answer some questions that had been on my mind. I wanted to know what encouraged people to recycle and repurpose items, and I also wanted to know what discouraged people from doing so, and I wanted to discover if people were participating in repurposing items in their everyday life. So this brought me to my project, which is titled Repurpose on Purpose. This project is a result of the Sustainability Studies Program at the University of New Mexico, and this video was also edited by me, Destiny Conkle. And what inspired the title of this project was that I believe that behind every action there is a profound purpose. And when it comes to repurposing items, I do believe that there is a very profound impact on the environment that is around us. So I wanted to study exactly what this purpose meant to other people aside from myself and how it appears in their day to day life. So what exactly is this project? Well, I wanted to focus on four main components that I will cover throughout the video. The first component is what exactly is repurposing, and I also wanted to cover why it was important and more specifically, how is it sustainable. I then wanted to cover if people were actually doing this in their day-to-day -day lives. And then lastly, I wanted to know how has it been done and how can you repurpose in your day-to-day -day life as well. So the first topic I will cover is what exactly is repurposing? So first, the dictionary defines repurposing as an item that is adapted for use in a different purpose. In my own words, I like to describe repurposing as giving an item or material a new purpose that is different from the purpose that it was originally created for. Think of a drinking straw, for example. The purpose it was created for was for drinking, but what if it could be used for purposes other than what it was originally created for? This could include other functional purposes or other artistic purposes as well. So why exactly is this important? How does repurposing items have a positive impact on the environment that exists around us? Well, when you use an item more than once and you extend its life, you turn it into a multi-use item. And in doing so, you're able to keep this item in the cycle of life and keeping it out of the trash can. Ultimately, this process can serve as a sustainable means of using materials in our environment because by keeping materials out of the trash can and by avoiding waste we are also keeping these materials away from landfills. A landfill is a place to dispose of waste material by burying it and covering it over with soil. The issue with this process is that the objects and materials that we cover with soil don't often disappear right away. They actually collect over time in large piles, and solid waste landfills are the third largest source of human-related methane emissions in the United States. Methane is a gas and one of several gases that contributes to overall global climate change. This gas is released as these large piles of material decompose over time. The Environmental Protection Agency is interested in repurposing because gas emissions can be affected by recycling and changing product use. For example, recycling office paper or aluminum can reduce environmental effects, and it will also create positive environmental benefits, such as reductions in energy consumption and greenhouse gases. So, by repurposing an item and changing the product's use, you're able to ultimately create positive environmental benefits for the people that exist around you. But wait, are people actually repurposing items in their day-to-day -day life? This is something that I really wanted to figure out. So to do so, I reached out on different social media platforms as well as other places such as school and work to find out what people actually were doing in their day-to-day -day life. So I came up with some questions and I asked friends, family, 
co-workers, students, professors, and even strangers, and I wanted to hear what they had to say in responses to the questions that I asked them. The first question I asked was, have you ever reused an item that was meant to be thrown away? And if so, what was it and why did you reuse it? So I got both yes and no's, and the items that I heard the most of included water bottles, um, cardboard boxes, and also plastic store bags. And when I asked people why they did reuse these items, they stated that they wanted to recycle, it was cheaper this way as opposed to buying new items, it was fun, and a lot of people actually said they did it because they knew that it was better for the environment. I then asked people um, that didn't reuse items why they didn't do it, and they stated that they would like to start, they might feel a little lazy at times, and some people actually said that it kind of just grosses them out. This was interesting to me because this was not a reason that I would have thought of myself, so I was very glad to hear a different perspective than the ones that I had usually heard. So question number two that I asked are what are some ways that you recycle currently? And the two most common answers I received are the recycling bin, which is a very simple and effective means of recycling. And um, the other answer I received was actually avoiding the purchase of single-use items, which is a very proactive way to avoid waste. Third, I asked people, do you think reusing items is important or maybe not so much? And I wanted to know what why and what they thought. I was glad to hear that every single person I asked said yes, they do believe that it is important to the world around them. And the most common answers I received as to why is because it keeps material out of landfills, it helps people save money, and uh, most importantly, it is good for the environment that exists around us. The last question I asked was for people who are willing to share, I wanted to know what some of the creative, crazy, silly, artistic, functional ways that they have repurposed an item instead of throwing it away. And the responses that I got made me so happy, they made me laugh, they made me curious, and it was really interesting to hear how people reused items in their day-to-day life. And it was also fun to let people know that they were actually repurposing items without them even knowing it. When I did ask this question though, I did receive some responses of concern from many people. I heard things such as, I'm not creative enough to repurpose items, I just don't have the time to do it, or I don't have the supplies or tools for repurposing, or some people just stated that they wish they knew how but they just didn't. And that is totally fine because I can totally see how intimidating repurposing can be for someone who's never done it before. So with this video, I wanted to show people that repurposing items is a lot more simple than they think it is. And not only is it simple, but it could actually be a lot of fun as well. So in the rest of the video, I'm going to show some simple tutorials for repurposing common household items while also using limited resources. And then I'm also going to provide some ideas that are both creative and simple that can be used when repurposing items with um, different things that you can find just laying around the house. So if you're ready, I'd like to show you how you can repurpose some things around your household. But before I do that, I want to tell you guys a little bit about something called Pinterest, which is something that I'm sure a lot of you know about. But with Pinterest, I use it as inspiration for many of my repurposing projects. I know it can be a little intimidating to repurpose an item when you're not really sure how to go about it. So I use Pinterest for all of my inspiration. And specifically, you can visit my page with my name, Destiny Conkle. And on my page, I do have a board that is titled Reduce, Reuse, Recycle. And under that board, I have a separate section that's called Repurpose on Purpose, the title of this project. And under there, you can find all kinds of different repurposing items with simple things that you can find around the home. So to begin, I started with a handful of items that I've collected during one day in my household, in addition to a couple of old t-shirts. So the first project I'll start with is a simple t-shirt bag that you can use from an old t-shirt. And you'll start off by laying it out and cutting off the sleeves on each side as well as the neckline. Then after turning it inside out and labeling a closure on the bottom, you can either stitch it or glue it shut, turn it inside out again, and then there you go. And you can fill it in with anything that you need and it is stretchy so it serves as a very functional means of holding your things. 
So next I'll show you how to make t-shirt yarn also from an old t-shirt. So what you're going to do is cut a quick little slit on the bottom and then you're going to start cutting around the bottom of the t-shirt and you're going to continue to cut the shirt as you rotate it all the way up until there isn't any more shirt to cut. And what this is actually going to do is once you have this long strip completed, once you stretch the fabric of a, um, a stretchy kind of t-shirt, it'll curl up into a tube-like structure so that it kind of resembles yarn. So it'll go from this flat type of shape all the way to this round yarn-like shape. And what I do is I just roll it up into a ball just to store it for convenience and I will keep it aside whenever I want to do any type of yarn light project I'll use this as an, al an alternative. Some of my favorite projects I like to use with yarn include things like weaving for decoration or you could even weave things like bathroom mats or carpets as well. Some projects don't require any tools at all such as using an old lid from a plastic cup as a coaster for one of your drinks so it requires limited resources. This one's a very fun and creative one. It's a stamp made out of a styrofoam material. What's really great about styrofoam is that it is very soft so it makes it very easy to make indentions and designs when creating things such as stamps. So what I did was I cut a small portion of this container that I had collected, just a little bit that was large enough for the design that I wanted to do. And after this, I found a small tool, anything that has a hard and thin edge. This will make it easy to make an intricate carving design into your styrofoam. So I just carved this design out. And once I was completed with that indention, I used a small amount of paint and a large surface brush to lightly coat my design in a thin, thin matter of paint. And once I was done with this, I found a surface which is just a scrap of an old t-shirt that I had and I pressed very firmly on my design and peeled it off and it creates this pretty intricate negative and positive space design. So a little more on the functional side, I used an old plastic water bottle top as a food storage lid. So I cut off the top of the snack bag that I wanted to use and with a small knife, it can be a box cutter or an X-Acto knife, I cut off the top of a soft plastic water bottle and once I was completed with this, I twisted my snack bag very thinly, just thin enough to fit through the top head of the water bottle. I pulled it through and I folded the remaining part of the bag over the nozzle of the water bottle. And once this is complete, you can grab the original lid from the water bottle and screw it back on. And it serves as a means as um, protecting your snack bags so you can reuse it at a later time. Next, I transformed this soda can into a small vase, and this one is pretty simple. The only thing you need is a can opener. So similar to how you would open just a normal food can, you would do the same on the top ledge of a soda can. And uh, once you're complete, it's just a, it just serves as an empty, cute little functional vase. And you can't forget about the Coke tabs that are always on the top of the cans. There are so many functional and creative uses for these. Some of my favorites serve as a picture frame holder on the back of a picture or even a grand chandelier. Once again, using an old t-shirt, I utilized it for a couple different hair accessories that were much needed. For the first accessory, I cut off a portion of the sleeve, which served as the perfect length for a headband. And similar to the t-shirt yarn tutorial, once I cut off this piece, I stretched it out a little bit so that the, eight, the edges were a little bit cleaner and it served as a perfectly functional headband. Next, I cut off a smaller rectangle to serve as a hair tie. So I cut off a long tube and just like the yarn tutorial again, I stretched it so it went from a flat shape into more of a tube-like shape. And then I tied it into a simple knot with the two ends. And these are actually pretty similar to hair ties and elastics I would actually see at the store. So this, per this perfectly suited um, as a hair tie for me to hold up my hair. 
I definitely felt like a survivalist with this one. I used a plastic straw from an old plastic cup to create a to-go storage. So what I did was I grabbed a lighter or just a means of heat. You, what you want to do is pinch the end of the straw and I used a bobbing pin to make sure it maintained pinch because you want it to stay pinched and enclosed the whole time during the process. And once I had it secured, I used the lighter to melt the tip so that when it melted, it melted together and it sealed the end of that straw. Then once the end of the straw was sealed, I chopped off the other end. I filled it up with something that I feel like I would need on the go. In this case, I used some foundation makeup. And then I repeated the process on the other side so that both ends were sealed. And once I labeled it, I had a to-go secure form of makeup. The rest of the plastic cup also serves many other uses. Some of my favorites include snow globe ornaments, these cute little lights, and even kids games. Plastic bottle lids are another things in, of abundance that serve many other functional and creative means such as clocks, decor, stamps, and even these cute little macaroon decorations. Next, I use the bottom of two different plastic water bottles to add to my acrylic style vanity. So after I cut off the bottoms, I simply just filled them with makeup or jewelry and because they were clear, you can see clearly what's inside of them. This next one was inspired by my mom who loves bird feeders, so I used the bottom of a plastic bottle and some twine that I had from a previous project and I cut three holes um, from an equal distance from one another on each end of the plastic water bottle bottom. I threaded through the twine and I tied it at a knot at the end and snipped off the excess. That way when I pulled it through it remained secure. I did this for the two other holes and once I had them all gathered together I tied them in a simple knot at the top so I can hang it outside wherever I liked. I snipped off the excess and then I left it outside to see if I would get any takers. My last craft that I have is made out of a toilet paper roll and it serves as a plant starter. What I did was at the bottom of the toilet paper roll, I cut four slits to create four different little folds on the bottom. And with no real strategy or anything in mind, I just folded down each of the flaps and I creased them very well just to ensure that they stayed. You are more than welcome to secure this in any way you'd like. I, however, just left it as is, just as long as it stayed enclosed, just so that it was enclosed enough to hold the soil that I was gonna put in. I filled the tube up with my seeds and soil and watered it generously, and I will be using this little starter to replant into my main garden when the seeds start to sprout. With these tutorials in mind, I hope you can see that repurposing items is not only an efficient means of recycling, but also a creative way to combat the global climate change that exists around us. Repurposing items serves as a means of displaying your creativity while also helping the world around you. I hope this project inspires you to repurpose something within your own home, and even if you've never done it before, I know you can do it. So thank you for joining me on my repurpose on purpose journey. I can't wait to continue to see the role that repurposing will play in our world. And goodbye.